So now it's MR turn, and of course we are talking about uh, a complex technique with partial overlapping, mostly related to the anatomical pitfalls we already heard about. My initial disclosure uh, reported here is that this presentation has 64 videos, so this is already a pitfall we will hopefully manage to, to skip, but uh, we worked with the uh, staff, and so probably this won't be a problem. But the truth is that cardiac MR faces several important challenges that radiologists or cardiac imagers in general need to be aware of in order to avoid falling in pitfalls. And the first issue is related, and we're dealing with MR, to the complex cardiorespiratory motion shown in this real-time movie depicted here, which implies that there is a continuous upward and rightward motion of the diaphragm, and of course the heart is beating. What does it mean that we have to develop and to use breath hold sequences and to use ECG-gated uh, uh, acquisitions. And this is, of course, the first and basic step to perform cardiac MR. Or, of course, like in this case, there is also the possibility to use real-time techniques, which has uh, quite limited use uh, in current clinical daily routine. The second uh, problem that we have to deal with, mostly as radiologists, is that the heart is not oriented according to coronal, sagittal, or axial plans within the chest. So we have to deal with plans that are usually non-familiar with, uh, called short axis, four-chamber view, et cetera, et cetera, but I won't focus on that. Third problem, and we will extensively discuss this point, is related to the presence of fat. Fat tissue completely surrounds the heart and is mostly visible at the level of the right ventricular free wall, as shown here. It is strictly connected with the epicardium, so uh, when we will discuss about uh, possible depiction of fat infiltration and arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia, we will show how much this can be tricky and how do we overcome, if possible, this, uh, this potential pitfall. We already heard about the anatomical pitfalls of the heart, and I will show you different cases. This is a prominent crista terminalis I won't discuss, and you already heard about in the beautiful case showed by Gorka previously. Uh, there is a third point, which is MR-related, depending on the continuous turbulent flow, uh, pr uh, proton inflow within the cardiac cavity. So this causes turbulences, may cause artifacts that we may use to assess, for example, uh, presence of stenosis with acceleration, like in this patient with a, a subvalvular aortic stenosis. You see that there is a dark rim artifact going into the direction of the systolic ejection murmur. And finally, and this is another point that uh, probably represents the major pitfalls of cardiac MR, either for radiologists and for cardiologists, it certainly requires a long training curve because it is really a mixture of clinical and technical information to rely on. So I will try to review the most important uh, uh, pitfalls of cardiac MR, offering, whenever is possible, some practical solutions to overcome this limitation. And how did I, did I organize my lecture is, as shown here, in anatomic pitfalls, technical pitfalls and clinical pitfalls. And this is the pathway and the agenda I will try to discuss in the next uh, 45 minutes with you. Anatomic pitfalls are the following and uh, possible the, the differentiation between masses versus pseudomasses. The problems of hypertrabiculation, which is a very common clinical problem, increased ventricular volumes, and the problem of fat. We will focus on the differentiation between real versus uh, uh, false perfusion defects, we will discuss about late enhancement, when is it true, when is it false, and how do we approach the problem of late enhancement, and we will discuss some clinical cases with related possible uh, important pitfalls. Starting with anatomic pitfalls, how will I uh, manage with them in my lecture? I will show you the clinical problem to solve, so a kind of simulation of the clinical request we do receive. We will discuss one or two cases related to that clinical request, and hopefully I will manage to...